we have almost come to the end of week number one in IPL and the most startling stat that I can tell you at this hour is that the team batting first have scored 200 plus runs three times already in this season and twice they have been chased down. We shall talk about uh, what is happening in uh, the league this year and the kind of impact that is ha having on the bowlers. But tonight is a clash of two big hitting teams once again. Punjab taking on Kolkata at the Wankhede Stadium. Punjab has played one match this season and hunted down 206 runs target in grand style. Kolkata has won one game, lost one game. An intriguing subplot to look forward to is Andre Russell. If he is fit enough, then the battle against Odeon Smith. Russell is still the gold standard of T20 cricket, while Smith is the latest big hitting all rounder from the Caribbean. Tonight, we focus on the big hitters and their impact on IPL. 200s are a new norm, or should I say, the new normal in T20 cricket, and it is hurting bowlers more than ever before. Have a look at uh, what has happened in the just in just seven days of IPL. Teams batting first scored 200 plus thrice this season. Now, let's have a look at the teams that have scored most number of 200 runs and it has happened over the last 14 seasons bangalore tops the list followed by chennai punjab mumbai kolkata rajasthan and on the bottom half you will see teams like deccan chargers gujarat lions who don't even exist in exist in ipl anymore but they also have managed to score 200 runs at least once in a season now, uh, the most number of 200 runs uh, were scored in 2018. 15 200 runs were scored uh, in that season, but uh, that was not the season when highest number of runs were scored in the IPL. Now, here's the intriguing twist. Now, if you score 200 runs, doesn't guarantee you a win. Unlike in test cricket, runs on the board don't translate to a win. So here it is, 14 defeats for the team scoring 200 runs in first innings. It's time um, to talk about the imbalance between the bat and the ball. I am joined by sports broadcaster Prakash Vakankar. I'll also be joined by Mihir Bose, the author of Nine Waves, The Extraordinary Story of Indian Cricket. Prakash, um, Thank you very much for joining us on the broadcast this evening. Now, you don't need a Chris Gale anymore to do any kind of power hitting that has been on display over the last few seasons. There are Agarwals, Raja Pakses, Shah Rukh Khan's, Odeon Smith's, Andre Russell's and Shreya Shaya, just to name a few. And, and the bowlers, uh, their plight has been more, perhaps more miserable than ever before. Well, Rika, look, uh, I don't disagree with you that, uh, you know, high scoring and big hitting is, is becoming more and more the norm. And we're seeing that translate into other formats. But since we're talking T20 specifically, uh, when it began, it's meant to be a spectacle, right? And I think in that sense, the rules, to some extent, uh, set it up that way, whether it is the first five, first six overs of the power play, whether it is the fielding restrictions, the fact that, uh, you know, uh, the umpires are very, very strict on uh, wides, etc., meaning that more balls get bowled. Sometimes these details are lost in scoring, uh, in, in tackling only the 200 plus scores. Mm -hmm. Now, that said, and speaking about this particular IPL, I think we'll have to wait for a few more games and see if grounds are delivering a pattern. Uh, at the 1K, for example, in the two games so far, no one's got past 200, if my yeah. memory serves me right. Uh, the the Brabon has had one great game yesterday. We uh, we've seen, seen that Dy as well. and Dy Patil as well. Hmm. So we'll have to wait and see. As far as bowlers being undermined or the bat over dominating, hmm. which I think is your basic hypothesis or question today, uh, I think that was always meant to be, wasn't it? I mean, which is why great bowlers like Lasit Malinga uh, or the way we are seeing Bishnoi bowl right now, or like we've seen, uh, you know, earlier. Uh, effects from the younger drain Dwayne Bravo not to take anything away from him today. I think that is why the bowling performance which wins you a game is the exception. Whereas the batting performance that wins you a game is expected. And, and look, they are coming from everywhere. Badoni, 
Hmm. Just a simple, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. A but, greenhorn, uh, so to say. Small greenhorn, small built. He doesn't come with the rippling muscles of the of the Caribbean esque or the Australians. Hmm. And look what he's doing in two games. He's shown us that he is a force to reckon with. Mm-hmm. Deepak Hooda. I mean, the way he hits that ball, mm-hmm. it is massive, right? Mm-hmm. So I think the cricketing equipment, the rules, the pitches. And indeed, mm-hmm. the spectacle of the ball disappearing into the night sky mm-hmm. is part of the T20 merriment, which is why bowlers have to continuously reinvent themselves. Right. And when we see a great bowling performance, mm-hmm. it's talked about much more. Okay, we also have Mihir Bose with us on the broadcast. Mihir, thank you very much for being on the show. Well, let me... Uh, bring up uh, these graphics of the bowlers and the price that uh, the IPL teams have shelled on them this season. Some of them uh, bought for as high as 11 crore rupees, 10.75 crore rupees. Mihir, uh, the franchises are also investing in bowlers, but they're not getting as much returns as they're getting from the batsmen. Well, you know, limited overs cricket, which is what this is, the ultimate form of limited overs cricket, has, if you look at it historically, progressed towards batsmen making more runs. And let me remind you of the uh, 2007 Mm -hmm. ICC World Cup, first T20 World Cup, which set off IPL. And the first score there was the West Indies made 205 for six and South Africa made 208 for two and South Africa won very easily. The fact is, of course, that that tournament was marked by low scores, you know, 130, 140. But if you see progressively, and I've been watching and reporting cricket for over 50 years, in the 60, what was the 60 over game? Mm before Kapil Dev had his great miraculous moment in 1983. In those days, in the early years, the bowlers dominated because the batsmen didn't take chances. The way they saw the game, that they were building an innings like in Test Match Cricket. Mm-hmm. Now, then, of course, it started became a batsman's game. I mean, right. look at the great feats of Sachin Tendulkar and Virat Kohli. Mm-hmm. And that is what we are seeing now in T20 cricket. We are seeing that progression. And as, as Prakash said, said, you know, hitting sixes, counting sixes, you know, in, in that that is that is so um, adrenaline pumping, you know, that is part of the game much more. I mean, you know, how many bowlers will take a hat trick? Not even just with Bumrah will take a hat trick in, in, in T20 t- 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 cricket. Well, so, I, I mean, I think does. the spectacle of the game mm-hmm. has changed and we must accept that. Well, um, Prakash, let me ask you, amid carnage, would you say dew has been the the death of uh, bowlers? Dew, did you say? Are you asking me? Uh, Prakash, Uh, uh, amid the carnage that we see, um, batting carnage. No, I, 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 I think T20 cricket has shown. And, you know, there's a big debate going on in England where I'm talking from, where everybody's saying, you know, their test team has been ruined by one day cricket and T20 cricket. Actually, where has Jasprit Bumrah come from? Where, where has Sadhul Thakur come from? They have come from T20 cricket. Right. T20 cricket teaches the bowler a certain discipline, mm-hmm. which can be very, very useful in test cricket. And I think it will produce bowlers, but it will not produce a Bishan Singh Bedi. It will not produce uh, my hero, Shubhash Gupta, or anybody like that. You know, that is not the nature in any way it will probably not produce a Shane Warren mm-hmm. but it will produce very very effective particularly quick bowlers the odd spinners but it will produce effective quick bowlers Prakash let me ask you one last question and I have time for that uh, what is the way out really for the bowlers everyone says that you have to get one trick or the other when you come into IPL but really what how do the bowlers contain these batsmen I think uh, clearly it is going to become a much more thinking game if it hasn't already. Mm -hmm. I think bowlers have to have a repertoire of skills, just like batsmen have to have a whole range of strokes to play. Mm -hmm. Uh, They will have to look at the conditions of each individual venue, the wicket, the pitch, the overhead conditions and the opposing batsmen. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you saw in yesterday's game, Pretorius actually did extremely well by bowling into the body of the batsman and restricted them. So it is going to be a game which is going to be a lot more thought. But at the end of the day, you've got to execute on those 22 yards. That is the name of the game. And that hasn't changed, mind you, Mm -hmm. ever since the time that Meher referred to. 
Well, I think uh, what uh, the uh, BCCI or the ICC can also look at is uh, not having the kind of boundaries, short boundaries and flat pitches that they currently have in these two T20 tournaments. Thank you very much, Prakash and Mihir, for joining me on the broadcast.